So I think with this I will currently leave the CI and go to uh, somewhat more technical issues. So this is ex this is what is called second quantization. This is extremely elegant however, note that this word second quantization itself may puzzle you actually what is second quantization. We have of course talked of one kind of quantization in quantum mechanics that you already know and that is essentially the first quantization if you want to say. So what we are discussing is actually expressing quantum mechanics in another language. So the second quantization will not necessarily bring in new physics, but it will actually tell that how these physics of anti-symmetry etc., etc. that we have learned can be written in a simpler way. So that is what is second quantization, it is a language but the language makes a simplification. In fact, if you look at the Hamiltonian of our Hamil uh, the Hamiltonian that we write, it is always written in terms of number of electrons. So our Hamiltonian has a sum over h of i which is number of electrons, sum over 1 by r i is a number of electrons. In the second quantization when we will write the same Hamiltonian, we will not have explicit dependence on the number of electrons. In the similar way when we write the wave function for fermions, we have to explicitly write Slater determinant. You will see that in the second quantization even that is not explicitly required, it is automatic formation. So, th so these are some of the advantages. So the two important points are of course in simplification of writing the wave function and expression of the operators. And then we will see how we can write matrix element of an operator between two wave functions that is letter rule, right? Two determinants on each side and the Hamiltonian matrix element. How does that translate in second quantization? The slater condon rules. We have done this uh, for type 1, 2, 3, okay? So because wave function will have a different language, operator will have a different language. And so the expression of the operator and the wave function will look different from <coughs> what you have learned so far. So these two things, the expression of these both wave function and operators will change in the second quantization and hence of course later Condon rules will also look different. And this will actually simplify in doing the algebra and that is one of the reasons the second quantization is taught, okay. Again we do not have time to re-express all the algebra, but please remember that all that we have done so far, Hartree-Fock, perturbation, and CI can be rewritten in terms of second quantization. It will not bring in any new physics, but it will just simplify and later on when you go beyond MP2 for example, MP3, MP4, it becomes actually mandatory because to do that horrendous expression in the first quantization becomes extremely difficult as you go to higher order perturbation or even when we will do couple clusters. So it is better to use second quantization right from the beginning for many such cases. CI can also be expressed in terms of second quantization, okay, but CI is somewhat easy because it is a linear expansion, it is only an eigenvalue problem, so it was somewhat easy. Okay, so that is, uh, that is the introduction to why second quantization is required to be learned, okay. So what we will do <coughs> is that we will start with the second quantization and as we start we will define two very important operators, two basic operators. One of them is called the creation operator. So let us say sum A and this is the way to write this A subscript alpha some number that alpha can be any number anything that you want and superscript dagger, okay. So that is called the creation operator. What does this mean? It means that it creates this operator will create an electron. in a spin orbital 
alpha. So this is the action of the operator. So let us assume that there is something called vacuum. There is a ket vector called vacuum. Vacuum, what is vacuum? Vacuum means nothing exists. Okay, so it is an abstract concept, nothing exists. Then I allow A alpha dagger to act on the vacuum. What will happen? It will now create an electron in a spin orbital alpha and you will get a one electron state alpha. Right? You will get a one electron state alpha or I j whatever is the subscript. If this is I, you will get I. Okay? Is it clear? So, vacuum is an abstract concept that it is a ket vector where nothing is there, it is a zero state. Null state, I just allow A alpha dagger to act, then I will create a state alpha. Of course, I can have multiple creations. So, I can now have another state, another operator A beta dagger, which acts on A alpha dagger vacuum. Now, obviously, this will create a two electron state, right? It is quite obvious and this will create a state which I now call beta alpha. Now, what is important here is to notice that as soon as I create a two electron state, I must make sure that this is anti-symmetric. I am talking of electrons. So, obviously, this beta alpha that it creates is automatically a determinant beta alpha. So, I am creating a Slater determinant which is automatically anti-symmetric just by having a of two operators acting one after another. So, note that this when this operator acts, it is not simply creating another electron in beta orbital, but at the same time anti-symmetrizing. So, that is the job when it goes to many party, many electron problems and so on. So, for example, if I have some AP dagger acting on already a slated determinant chi 1, chi 2 to chi n, which is can be a Hartree-Fock, n electron determinant, this will generate a n plus 1 electron determinant where the first orbital will be chi p and then chi 1, chi 2 to chi n. Note again the order of creation. The creation takes place immediately because the order is very important because of the sign. It is a determinant. So, creation takes place immediately. So, the order is very important as I told you here when I put beta dagger, the creation comes in beta. Okay? Quite clearly, if I would have created a alpha dagger, a beta dagger on a vacuum, this would be alpha beta, which should be negative of beta alpha, correct? By my definition. These are, please remember, these are by definition. This is my definition. So, there is no question of showing it. So, in principle, if I have a alpha dagger, a beta dagger, acting on in general an n particle determinant chi 1, chi 2 to chi n. This is negative of minus a beta dagger a alpha dagger acting on the same determinant. Is it clear? Because in one case beta will come first, then alpha will come. So, alpha will become the first column, then the beta. In this case, it will be opposite. So, of course, they have to have a negative sign change. So, if I interchange, then they will be identical. Is it clear to everybody? Now, we know that every wave function can be written as a linear combination of determinants which I call Slater determinants. SDs, 
which is just letter determinant or any wave function can be written as a combination of letter determinant. Now look at A alpha dagger, A beta dagger acting on a general wave function and A beta dagger, A alpha dagger acting on a general wave function. Since they are linear combination of determinants and every determinant follows the rule, then I can say that A alpha dagger, A beta dagger acting on any wave function is negative of a beta dagger, A alpha dagger acting on any wave function. Is it clear? Because any wave function is a linear combination of determinant. So in general, I can write an equation that A alpha dagger, is, it is an operator equation, is equal to minus A beta dagger, A alpha dagger, operator. Now it does not matter with whom it is acting. This I can write only because the operator acting on any wave, any arbitrary wave function is going to give negative. So I can write the operators are equal. Correct? So this gives me a very important rule of anti-commutation. A alpha dagger, a beta dagger is equal to 0. This is called anti-commutator. I hope all of you know this. That means A B plus B A equal to 0, right? So A B minus B A is commutator, A B plus B A is anti-commutator. So this anti-commutator So anti commutator of A B is defined as A B plus B. And of course you know how commutator is written, bracket. So, so please be careful. You know, if, if this if this is the sign that is used, it means it is anti commutator. If this is just this kind of parenthesis, it is commutator. Sometimes some of the textbooks to make sure it writes plus, just to make sure that you do not forget that it is anti commutator. Okay? So, but anyway, either way it is okay. The important point to note is that the A alpha dagger, A beta dagger anti commutator is 0. And this gives us a very nice understanding. Let us now, which I have actually not talked about so far, what is beta in relation to alpha? Let us assume that the beta is equal to alpha right, which I have not discussed. So far I have assumed that beta is different from alpha, but now I can discuss. It means that A alpha dagger, A alpha dag dagger plus A alpha dagger, A alpha dagger is 0, right, which means the operator A alpha dagger, A alpha dagger is 0. It is a null operator. In the operator language, it is a null operator. What does it mean? It does not give vacuum. It is a null operator, which means if it acts on any function, if it acts on any function, any determinant, not just vacuum, any function, it will give you 0. So the operator is a null operator, it is a 0 operator. And that is understandable why it is becoming 0 now, physically think. If you have, if you create one alpha here, you cannot create another alpha again because the determinant becomes 0, two columns are 0, uh, two columns are identical, which actually you could have mentioned here itself that the beta has to be different from alpha. There cannot be a determinant by this definition alpha alpha, correct? So and it is good to know that I did not assume that, it is good to know that anti-commutation is automatically giving you this. You cannot create alpha twice, right? That is the meaning of creation operator is fine, but you cannot create a human being twice. God has created and now you cannot create a once more, right? So, so you cannot create what is already created by God. So, if alpha exists, a alpha dagger cannot act because if alpha exists, that means Whatever, whatever is there, that function I can write as A alpha dagger something, correct? So obviously I can't allow another A alpha dagger to act. So that is, that is a physical interpretation and that, that is a correct interpretation because that could have been actually argued right here. I mean, you should have seen right here that beta cannot be equal to alpha because if I have an electron in spin orbital alpha, I can't have another electron in spin orbital alpha, right? And that is a Pauli exclusion principle. 
So, this is actually a statement of Pauli exclusion principle, right? Or the statement of the symmetry itself that the wave function is anti symmetric, I mean, it is one and the same thing. We will come back to more discussion of the creation operator, but let me now go to the other operator. I told you there are two important operators. The other operator will be called annihilation operator. It is just opposite to creation operator. Annihilation operator which will be now written as just A alpha without the dagger. What would it do? it will annihilate, so exactly opposite, it annihilates an electron from a spin orbital alpha. So, if an electron exists, it will annihilate and I call it A alpha and I will tell you why I call it A alpha which is basically like an adjoint of the creation operator because dagger is like an adjoint, right. So, dagger, dagger is without the dagger. So, let us uh, try to analyze this operator. We will come to the anti-symmetry, anti-commutation of this operator as well, but let me first analyze this. So, let us assume that I have a, a state chi j, that means one electron state where chi j is there and I define A i dagger chi j where i is not equal to j, okay. So, I get a state which is now called i j. Note that you know I am not writing chi all the time, but that is understandable. When I am writing i j, it means chi i chi j, okay. the superscript is perfectly okay. Now, I want to understand what is the adjoint of this state, okay. So, the adjoint of this state is of course going to be chi j a i dagger dagger, okay, all right. So, let me take this state whatever is the adjoint of this state as a i dagger dagger. So, let us say I get this chi i. Now, you can see that to for this to act here first it has to destroy annihilate because they are already chi i exists. If it annihilates of course, this will have nothing will be there and I will immediately get this as a 0 state, null state, but without annihilation this cannot act, a, any two electron state will not be able to act. So, if you take any state, let us say k state, so I am just trying to say why is the adjoint of this state called annihilation. The annihilation is already defined as Ai. So, I am trying to say that this must first annihilate chi i, otherwise it just cannot act. This matrix element cannot act. So, basically if you look at an i jth state, from there I am annihilating an i and I am getting a jth state. I am doing the adjoint chi j chi j that is equal to 1. I will get this only if it can annihilate i. So, if I have k equal to i j and I take an annihilation A i k. I will get a state j. Now, you know that j j equal to 1. So, if I take an adjoint of this, you will see that this is k a i dagger, right, k a i dagger, k is the original state and then I have a j which is, uh, sorry, which is a i k. So, what is happening is that to get back my chi j chi j, I must have to annihilate i, then i has to be again recreated, right. And then if I take the matrix element, it will become 1 because this is already k. So, k is your ij. So, if you see you have ij here, you destroy i. So, I get j. Then I create i. I get again back ij and kk becomes 1 and this is already equal to 1. So, to get this, I have to get this equal to 1. So, why is it equal to 1? Because whenever I am, I am constructing either a 1 particle or a 2 particle state, they are all normalized determinants. 
So this, so all the all the uh, uh, electron state, one electron, two electron, all the states are normalized. So that is the interpretation why the adjoint of a creation operator is called annihilation operator. Otherwise, it will not even act. Then we will see the further insight when you look at the anti-commutation. So let us now look at a alpha, a beta acting on any any state, chi one, chi two, etc. So note that if there is a beta, it will actually destroy. So one of the important property of an annihilation operator is that a alpha acting on vacuum gives you zero. Just as a alpha dagger acting on a vacuum gives you an alpha state, if a alpha acts on a vacuum, this is going to give a zero because you cannot annihilate unless it exists. So this is a what is called a killer condition. It's a condition that we are actually using. So how would beta act? Only if there is a beta here. If there is a chi beta exists, then only otherwise it will become 0. So let us assume that there is a chi beta. So there are two possibility. Beta exists in the determinant or it does not exist. If it does not exist, in the case latter, A alpha A beta acting on this determinant is anyway 0 because I do not have to do anything. Beta will first act and beta will make 0. Alpha has no role because as soon as A beta acting on the determinant is 0, alpha has no role, right. So this is already 0. If on the other hand beta exists, then of course it has to annihilate beta. How does it annihilate? The rule of annihilation exactly like the rule of creation. What was the rule of creation? It creates right here. So the annihilation can be only done if beta exists right here. Otherwise it cannot be done. So what do you do? Beta can exist anywhere. So you just do a permutation. Bring beta here by permuting. Each permutation will require minus 1. Okay, so let us say you have k permutation required. So you get minus 1 to the power k okay, for the permutation and then you bring chi beta here, chi 1 here and so on. And then you allow a beta to act. Now it can actually sweep it off. So you get the determinant without the beta, chi 1, etc., chi n with a sign which is minus 1 to the power k. So we are now discussing a case where beta exists, okay. Now let me discuss the case of A alpha. Of course, again the same thing will happen. A alpha will only act if alpha exists. Alpha also exists, right. Otherwise, again it is 0. So let us assume that alpha also exists. Otherwise, they are 0. A alpha beta is 0. So let us assume that alpha also exists. If it exists, then what will happen? It will again destroy the alpha. But to bring the alpha, I have to bring it again back here, sorry. It will act here. So let us say there is a chi alpha. I have to bring it back here with again some, some amount of yeah, minus 1, some amount of minus 1. The question is whether I declare odd or even permutations, okay. So it is let us say minus 1 to the power k plus L or whatever. Then what do I do is to allow A beta A alpha to act on the same determinant chi 1, chi 2. So somewhere there is a chi beta, somewhere there is a chi alpha, okay. So now first alpha will go, then beta will go. Now what will happen is that in either of these cases, there will be one x less sign. So only a sign problem and you can actually see that if you take a simple two particle problem much more easily that let us take, you can take a simple determinant of alpha beta. So do a alpha a beta. So what do you first do? You write this as a minus A alpha A beta beta alpha, okay. And then of course you knock out A alpha alpha and then get a zero state, minus zero state. But then this is not important. I mean this could be, you know, if it is three electrons something will survive. But for two electrons, let us say I have a gamma state, alpha beta gamma, then gamma will survive here. If you do the reverse A beta A alpha, then first I have to bring alpha here, okay, and I get a minus sign, and then I again add this, 
I will get again the same minus gamma strain. Yes, so one of them has to cross, so there will be one odd sign. Because obviously, you know, when you do alpha and a beta and a beta and alpha, there will be one a negative sign extra, okay. So the point is that will actually lead to the same commutation as a alpha a beta is 0. This can be also derived by the acknowledgement that the a alpha is an adjoint of a alpha dagger. Because if, if a alpha is an adjoint of a alpha dagger, then obviously the the operator a alpha dagger a beta dagger is already 0. So, obviously a alpha a beta will be also 0. So, that could be another way of proving this. But the important point is again to prove that the a alpha a beta anti commutator is also 0. And hence, if I go back to beta equal to alpha exactly the same way, I will have a relation where a alpha a alpha is a null operator, right. So, I will have a alpha a alpha as a null operator. What does it mean? If I have destroyed alpha once from somewhere, I cannot destroy it again. Just as you cannot create second time, you can't annihilate second time, right. It is a very important physical meaning that I have already destroyed. So, I can't destroy unless I recreate. To recreate, there must be a alpha dagger before I allow a alpha to act. I have not defined, I am saying that I first write this as adjoint, then I show that this has to be annihilation, otherwise I do not get JJ. See, if this is not annihilation, I cannot, I cannot get JJ, because from the K is IJ, I destroy I. But we are already considering that AIK is equal to 0, it says the definition of annihilation is AIK is equal to J, I am just saying that the AI dagger, dagger is equal to AI. That I am not assuming because if you are assumed that the dagger is adjoint, then there is nothing to prove. I am showing that the. No, but AI, I am defining that AI is annihilation and AI dagger is creation. Right. That is defined. That is defined. What I am now saying is that the annihilation operator is the adjoint of the creation operator. A dagger is a creation operator. You are saying. A dagger is a creation operator. Is it a necessary condition? What is it? A, a dagger, A dagger is. No, I did not understand. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they are adjoint of each other. That, that does not seem It is a necessary condition to that to be an annihilation operator. See, if I have to define an annihilation operator, let us say I would have defined in a different manner. It would have, I had to prove that this is still adjoint of the creation operator. So, that is the reason we use a simple symbol where the dagger is put. Because it is anyway adjoint, then we know that a dagger, dagger is already A. So, the symbol, symbol is first defined to you, then the justification comes of the symbol that I have used this A dagger, I have used this A because one is a adjoint of the other. Now, of course, you could argue why not this dagger, that does not matter. That is a historical fact that the creation has been put as dagger and the annihilation is A. But the point that we are trying to say and I will come back to this discussion tomorrow and I will start there is that this annihilation creation operator, whatever symbol you give they have to be adjoint of each other. That is the point here. And once we prove this, then of course the anti-commutation is quite trivial. That would come from the anti-commutation of, from the anti -commutation of the creation itself. Once I prove, so either way it is okay. But or you can prove it separately by assuming that it is annihilation operator and then also prove it without even thinking whether it is adjoint or not. So this actually gives us, and I will come back because there are some people who have left today. Uh, that it gives us two anti commutation relationships, which I let me write it down. This is equal to 0 and A alpha A beta equal to 0, okay. And I will I will elaborate on this as I start tomorrow's class, okay. There is, of course, a third anti, anti commutation which is even more interesting that is anti commutation between one creation and one annihilation. So, what happens to this? So, out of the two operators, one of them is creation, one of them is annihilation and this is little bit more complicated. This will actually complete all possible anti-commutation between creation and annihilation operators and then we will see how to use them in the quantum chemistry. But of course, it is very clear that in constructing wave function, they are extremely powerful and we do not have to bother about anti-symmetrizing. 
that is the most important thing because by definition when I am constructing the, this is already anti-symmetric by definition. The only point is that where in the determinant where the column comes that is a fixed rule. So, column will be the first column of creation. For annihilation the column must exist here. So, in the case of annihilation you have to do this, but even in the case of creation you may have to do it that is not a problem. I have just taken two electron states, so it is very easy okay, to show this that is minus beta alpha and minus alpha beta. Okay. But if I have a long determinant I want to push it back that is a different matter, but the creation takes place the creation takes place right in the beginning first okay. annihilation also takes place right there. So, if I have to annihilate first I have to bring the spin orbital on the first column and then I can annihilate. So, they, then you require several minus 1 products of several minus 1. Yeah, direct developed, but what I am saying that it is not developed for quantum chemistry. It is developed as a mathematical tool. Basically, it has been used in physics extensively. Physics extensively it is used and uh, field theory. Field theory is probably one where the most extensive use that I can recall and quantum chemistry came much later. But you will see that it simplifies many things and whatever we have written can be simply written. For example, Hartree-Fock. So, the way the Hartree-Fock would be written is just following that by a creation operator. So, Hartree-Fock wave function determinant chi 1, chi 2 to chi n would be simply a 1 dagger, a 2 dagger, blah, 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 a n dagger, vacuum. Over. It is very simple. Okay. I do not care and I know exactly where the columns are in the determinant, the way I have written, right. So, the so, the last column is a n, then n minus 1, the first column is chi 1. First column is chi 1 because it is coming like this. So, if I interchange any 2, it becomes negative and that is actually reflected by the anti commutation. Anti commutation automatically reflects. So, I do not have to bother about anti symmetry. As long as I know the anti symmetry, the algebra of anti symmetry I am going to use, I have ensured the anti symmetry. So, anti symmetry need not be explicitly talked about. So, that is the first thing that I said wave function how are the wave functions written and then later on we will see how the operators can be written. Operators also have very nice expression. So, so here what is important is again explicitly number of the what are the spin orbitals. What are the spin orbitals that are there? The electrons are really underlying. Okay. So, these, these are again the just like in slater determinant you have spin orbitals. So, these are also creation of a of a in a particular spin orbital. But, but this is going to become a alpha a beta dagger yeah plus a beta dagger a alpha note. So, if I take adjoint this is this will actually become a alpha dagger a beta. So, that is a little different thing you can re express. So, the, the adjoint of this will be a alpha dagger a beta. So, I have taken alpha see of course, you know this could have been beta, this could have been alpha. The point is that there are two orbitals, they may not be different, I have not said that. There are two spin orbitals, one of them alpha, one of them beta. I will discuss what happens when alpha is not equal to beta, when alpha is equal to beta. So, that, that we will discuss, this is a little bit more complicated, it will require a discussion. Uh, but I will first finish this uh, part again, revise this part. I think the creation part is very clear, it is very easy. So, the annihilation part I will discuss. And then we will see how to represent the operators. Once you know how to represent the operators, we can actually start to do quantum chemistry because you require wave function and operators in second quantization. Okay. Again, I will do the second quantization in a very simple manner. I will not go into much details. We will actually tell, come back to MP2 and show how to draw diagrams. And the diagrams are actually evolution of the second quantization rules, the matrix elements, the slater condon rule that we saw talked about. So, we will actually go back to the diagrams and re-express re MP2, also tell you how to MP3 can be, could have been done, okay.